Hello and welcome. I'm Ivor Benjamin, and as the 2018-2019 American Heart Association President, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Joint Hypertension 2018 Scientific Sessions. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your extremely busy lives and joining my colleagues here in Chicago. Our program features outstanding presentation from experts in the fields of hypertension and kidney disease. I invite you to take in as much as possible over the next few days. I joined the American Heart Association as a volunteer over 30 years ago right here in Chicago. When I reflect on what has kept me involved and engaged with the AHA, it's the science and what we do to improve lives every day. Nothing makes me more proud than interacting with my outstanding colleagues. I would like to give special recognition to several of them right now. The Council on Hypertension's outstanding leaders, the Council Chair, Joy Granger, the Council's Chair-elect, Karen Griffin, Vice Chair of Clinical Affairs, Jan Basil, and Chair of Council on Kidney and Cardiovascular Disease, Vivek Bahla, and Vice Chair, Alexander Staryashenko. I would invite you to take the time this week to thank them personally. I also want to acknowledge the program committee members who have worked so hard to make this week's remarkable conference possible. The committee is led by Chair Karen Griffin and the executive committee, which includes Joey Grandre, Jan Basil, Michael Block, and John Bizziano. It's been another great year for the councils on hypertension and kidney and cardiovascular disease. Hypertension currently has more than 2,050 members and 32% of them are international members. The Kidney Council has over 540 members with 21% of them being international. Hypertension has elected nine members to become fellows of the American Heart Association and Kidney has elected 10 this past year. Our members have a prominent role in advancing the AHA mission. Over the past two decades, six Council on Hypertension members have been named as AHA Distinguished Scientists, and 14 have received the Association's Distinguished Achievement Award. I would like to congratulate member David Harrison, who was awarded the 2018 Basic Research Prize. Dr. Harrison will be recognized at the presidential session of our 2018 scientific session. At this meeting, we are pleased to host members and not yet members alike. We have set another record this year with more than 34,000 members representing 68 specialties and 121 countries. I would like to extend to you a personal invitation to join the AHA, especially for those of you who are not yet members. It's the place where you can make a difference in the care of our patients, their families, and for science. Our professional members give generously of their time and expertise to lead decision-making in health policy, treatment protocols, prevention recommendations, and much more. With their leadership, we publish over 30 scientific statements each year. They all make important contributions to the American Heart Association journals like hypertension. Hypertension, kidney, and our other AHA councils are working hard to drive us ever closer to our 2020 impact goal of reducing cardiovascular diseases and stroke deaths among all Americans by 20%, while also improving the cardiovascular health 
of all Americans by 20%. In 2015, we saw a slight decrease in CVD deaths, but recent 2016 mortality data release suggests that rates are back on the decline. To date, we're at a 15% reduction in mortality from all cardiovascular diseases. Looking at stroke as a specific cardiovascular disease, we're happy to see that the recent rising trends in stroke mortality seem to also return to a decline. To date, we're at a 14.3% reduction in mortality from stroke. Our estimated change in cardiovascular health, when you add it all up, is only 3.9%, compared to a 12% improvement needed to be on track to our 2020 goal. So our work is still cut out for us. I am very proud that AHA remains the largest private funder of cardiovascular disease and stroke research outside of the federal government, with 168 million in new research funded just this past year. I'm especially proud that 65% of those funds were awarded to early career in researchers, bringing our total investment to more than $4.1 billion in research funding since 1949. For hypertension specifically, the AHA committed $15 million to strategically focus research network. I know that there are many people and investigators in this audience who are members of the hypertension network. The four centers involved are University of Alabama at Birmingham, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Medical College of Wisconsin, and the University of Iowa. The network is now in its fourth year. I would like to highlight a few of the accomplishments of the hypertension SFRN to date. Dr. Mark Centillion from the University of Iowa and Dr. Janet Katov from the McGee's Women's Hospital were awarded a collaborative grant during this year's renewal collaboration offering. This is a new project based on their collaboration born out of the networks. They have a two-year, 463,000 grant entitled Mechanisms of Early and Late Postpartum Hypertension in Human Preeclampsia. A report on the network has been published in the AHA's Hypertension Journal, and three fellows have already been promoted to assistant or associate professor positions, highlighting the very strong commitment to supporting early career investigators that is shared by all networks. The AHA is committed to using evidence-based approaches to enhancing diversities of those conducting groundbreaking research. The AHA Research Committee and Board have approved an initiative with a focus on undergraduates to increase involvement of underrepresented minorities in science. We will implement phase one of this program this year. We hope as this program grows, it will be part of the solution in helping more underrepresented minority students decide to pursue graduate and professional degrees in the biomedical sciences. Over the past two years, more than $25 million have been dedicated to support underrepresented minority scientists across the career spectrum through the AHA's foundational research programs, including $15 million for an SFRN focused solely on disparities in cardiovascular disease and stroke. These are just some examples of how AHA is committed to doing all it can to support diverse investigators and to solving the health challenges facing diverse populations. Lastly, I hope to see you all at future AHA meetings. Don't miss the many hypertension sessions at the upcoming AHA scientific sessions this November 
10th through 12th in Chicago. There will be a session on redefining the guidelines with presentations from around the world related to all hypertension guidelines. Thank you and have a great and wonderful meeting.